Uh, had a real good meeting. Uh, uh, even up to this point, if we left and went to the house, we'd say we've had a good meeting. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> I heard uh, beautiful singing, and uh, we sing singing Amazing Grace there, and I, I just wanted to say listen to that sound. Yeah. I wanted to sing, but I wanted to listen. I want to do a little bit of both, you know, and it sounds so pretty. And I tell you, uh, as pretty as it may sound, can you ever have you ever even tried to wrap your head around what the sound itself would be like on the day that the Lord comes back? Have you ever even tried to imagine it? Makes my skin crawl when I think about it. Uh, I, right now, I got. Goosebumps all over my arms and stuff. Just trying to trying to comprehend what the sound will be like. The yeah. most glorious sound that has ever been heard. Yeah. When uh, and the singing, I believe, will begin right in the very dust, right in the very dust of the earth. You know, Elijah said he saw the bones come to bone. He heard a great rattling taking place yeah. in the land. Yeah. The bones come to bone, and the flesh and everything come upon it. There was a great rattling taking place. I tell you, uh, heard the prophesying of them bones. They were dead, wasn't they? Yep. It's dead bones. Yep. And, uh, these bodies that we have will go back to the dust from which they came, but there's a voice that's going to speak. And I don't know yeah. what it's going to I've heard people say the grave's going to burst open. I don't know if they, they don't need to. No. If the Lord don't want them to, they won't. But it don't really matter to me. All I know is they're coming out of there. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. You think about that. Untold millions. A number greater than uh, the sands of the seashore. Uh, how many multitude have died in hope? Yeah. It just uh, it blows my mind. It's, uh, it's how great God is. That's just basically Amen. what, that's what uh, basically is saying. <laughs> The times that we live in are very trying times, and uh, I know uh, I, I, where I teach history and stuff, and I've, I've told the kids, I said, I don't believe that there's ever been a time like this time, and uh, I believe that if you're living during this time, that you was called to live in this time. There's a reason. There's a purpose. I don't know what it is. I don't believe God has a plan. I believe He's got a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I believe it so firmly that I was talking to Brother Blaine Owens from over in the uh, uh, over at Rush Creek Church. Some of you may remember Brother Blaine over there, the deacon. Talking to him the other night, and he says that uh, how, talking about how frustrated he was with things. And he said, "I've just about reached my boiling point." So much you can sit back and take, and after a while, you got to stand up and do something, don't you? And uh, it's a fearful thing, very, very fearful thing. A few years ago, uh, I stood in the presence of uh, Cannon County School Board, seven board members, and there's probably three, three to five hundred people in a board meeting, and I stood there. Pretty much told them what I thought. Same people that hired me and in public, and they sit there and they took every single bit of it, never uttered a word. And uh, they made sure I paid for it. They made sure I paid for it. Uh, but what they don't know is, is I'm just stubborn enough to do it again. Because when something is right, it's right. Yeah. Yeah. If something is wrong, it's wrong. Yeah. If something is truth, it's truth. Yeah. The Lord stood before Pilate, and Pilate asked him a question. He said, what is truth? Yeah. Truth was looking at him. Yeah. He was speaking yeah. to truth. That's, he was speaking to it. Now think yeah. about that. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Pilate was speaking to truth right there. Yeah. I've heard it said, you know as well as I do, the tr truth will stand when the world's on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Truth don't have to be propped up. Truth no. is truth. You're being told uh, from right, and you're being told from left, and you're being told from bottom up, and inside out, and top down yeah. that things aren't true anymore. That's right. 
Yeah. You know, they, the same people, I'll say this, I'm going to read this verse to you here. Same people that will tell you that the science is settled. And this is up to you whether you believe this or not. If you do, you've been deceived. They tell you that the science is settled. Science, science, science says that man's causing the world to get overheated and he's going to burn it up. The science is settled. Just shut up. Science, science, science. Well, science says that an XY chromosome makes a man. Yeah. But they don't want to refer to that science, do they? No. You get to decide what you want to be, and that makes it so. You know as well as I do that that's not the truth. They're telling people everywhere that oh, you get to this. They don't put the names on the birth certificate anymore. Uh, not their uh, gender. They're going to let them decide. You don't get to decide what you are. You are what you are. That's what you are. Right? It's how it is. Somebody says, uh, what is truth? Truth just is. It is. You don't have to explain it. It's truth. It's what it is. Yet, they're trying to blur the lines, ain't they? You know why they're doing this? You think this has something to do with gender? This ain't got a thing to do with gender. It's got to do with you. It's got to do with this church right here. Amen. It's got to do with anybody that professes that they believe what this word says. Amen. Right Amen. This is a slow and gradual dismantling of everything Amen. that you and I know. It's what it is. They can tell you whatever they want. You might say, well, it's some conspiracy theory. It's not a conspiracy theory. You know why? You can read in your Bible where other people did it. You can read where they did it in the Bible. They did it, but there was always somebody who was born to live in that time who stood up for what the Lord said. And what did the Lord do? He blessed them in all instances. There's a man named Gideon. There's several of them. I want to read this one to you. Gideon, the Bible said, <clears throat> was down, and I've, I've went to this story many times. He was down in a wine press, threshing wheat. The children of Israel, the Bible said, did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midianites for seven years. Amen. Are we doing evil in the sight of the Lord? Yeah. God's people might not be, but this land that we live in is eat up with it. Eat up with evil. All right, the devil goes to and from destroying and devouring whom he may. We know that. And you know as well as I do that a black sheep's a black one and a white sheep's a white one. You know that. You know that a man's a man and a woman's a woman. You know that. And the only person that can convince people, and listen, this is a profound statement I heard the other day, the only person who can convince people to deny what their eyes see, what their senses feel, is the father of lies himself, the devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody that tells you that something that is, is not, yeah. they are lying to you. Yeah. Plain and simple. They ain't nothing else but lying to you. Yeah, right, right, right. And the author of confusion is the devil himself. Yeah, that's yeah. who it is. Yeah, you can say, well, that's not being tolerant. Let me tell you something. I am not tolerant of anything or anybody that denies what this word says. Amen. Call me a bigot, call me a hypocrite, call me whatever you want. But I am going to be set for the defense of the gospel, as the Apostle Paul said. And if he even considered it uh, worthy. He considered it an honor to suffer for Christ's sake. You and I may be born in a time so where that you and I may be just like Gideon here. We're going to have to stand up and speak. We're going to have to do something. The old saying goes, get off the stool and do nothing and start doing something. And that don't mean get out here and start doing it, but stand up for what the Lord says Amen. and deny these things. Gideon was down in a wine press threshing wheat. The reason he was down there is because the children of Israel had done evil in the sight of God. Yeah. They had done evil in the sight of God and God, uh, in a way of punishing them, he turned them over to the Midianites for seven years. These Amen. people were in bondage. Don't think that God will not punish you. Because God will. Uh, the Bible teaches us that the nation whose God is the Lord, yeah. who's that? Who, is, is this nation today uh, worshiping the Lord? The nation ain't, 
But let me tell you something. God's people have had an influence on the way this nation has been directed. Amen. I read the other night where it says every time you turn around, you read of a denomination embracing something else. Yeah. I seen where the Methodists yeah. the other day were are having a conflict within the great Methodist association within this country as to whether or not they were going to start ordaining uh, and allowing uh, gay and homosexual ministers into the pulpit. Yeah. They're having a division and they're having a split over it. I saw where the Southern Baptists are going to start allowing heresy into the pulpit because they're going to start letting people uh, who speak in tongues come into the pulpit and start advocating things. They just all want to get along for the sake of getting along. Let me tell you something. When it comes to the Word of God, there is no compromise. I, 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 the times have changed from a long time ago and times continue to change. But let me tell you something. God does not change. He said, I am God and I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Let me tell you, if God did change, we would be consumed is what would happen. But God has promised. And you read in one place where he said there was a remnant. According to election, a remnant, brethren, who had not bowed down to the uh, Baal, uh, Baal or what have you. Third. Uh, but uh, Gideon here was down in a wine press. He was amongst the people who were being punished because of uh, what they had done and had been evil. He was down in a hole in the ground and he was fresh and wheat for his people trying to make food for his family. Why would you try to thresh wheat down in a hole? Let me tell you why he was doing it. He was doing it because it wasn't safe for him uh, to be professing to be what he was and walking out here on the street and if you don't think it's coming to your neighborhood, you're wrong, brother. Uh, it's a coming and it's quickly approaching uh, uh, because every time you stand up for good, uh, uh, there's about ten more standing there uh, uh, shooting you down. Uh, are you going to be set for the defense of the gospel? Uh, I'll tell you what, you've got every reason uh, uh, to be set for the defense of the gospel. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what it was. Uh, the Lord laid down his life for you. Uh, uh, he wasn't ashamed uh, uh, to go to the cross of Calvary uh, and to shed out his life's blood uh, upon the cross. Uh, he wasn't ashamed uh, uh, to come down there. Uh, he wasn't ashamed to make on mind your sins. He wasn't ashamed to do none of those things. And I'll tell you what, brother, we didn't deserve it. He did it because he loved us. And if you love the Lord today, let me tell you why you love him. It's because he first loved you. He came into this world to die. I'm not ashamed.
confidence uh, uh, because he knew that the Lord was with him. Uh, yeah. And one man uh, uh, became ten men. Uh, uh, brother, praise God, and ten men uh, uh, became ten thousand. Uh, uh, became twenty thousand. Uh, and became thirty thousand. Uh, uh, praise God. Uh, that's what yeah. the Lord would do. Uh, uh, stand up for the Lord. Uh, yeah. uh, why? Because uh, he stood up for you on yeah. Calvary. Yeah. He went to the cross for you. Yeah. It's the least you can do. Yeah. He's instructed us to live, to take up our cross and follow after yeah. him. Yeah. What's that mean? Yeah. What's that mean? Holding your mouth and being quiet or you're afraid of offending somebody. Yeah. That's not what that means. No. Don't ever be ashamed. No. Don't be like Peter. Don't be found denying the Lord. Yeah. Peter suffered because of it. Yeah. Don't be found in that position. Yeah. Let me tell you something, brother. When the darts are pointed at you, it's a hard thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what the Lord will do? The Lord will make a way. Yeah. You know why? The Lord is the way. He'll make the way. Yeah. He is the way. Yeah. Gideon comes over here. He got 30,000 men feeling pretty confident, ain't he? What's the Lord telling him? He says, now I'm going to show you something. You yeah. feel all confident. You've got all these people. Yeah. You felt like you needed everybody to come and join you. I'm going to show you something. You don't need that. Yeah. You don't need all them people there. He goes and he tells them. He says, those who are afraid, go back to the house. Yeah. They go back and ends up with about 10,000. He says, Lord, how can we fight the battle now? There's only 10,000. Yeah. You may say, Hey Lord, how can I fight the battle? I'm going to let me tell you, brother. Oh, the Lord says you still got too many. Oh, you got too many men go down uh, to the water. Uh, they get a drink of water. Uh, and they go down there and they begin to drink uh, all this water. Uh, and they some, brother, and uh, oh, they scooped it up in their hand. Uh, and they took a drink with their hands turned up. Uh, oh, let me tell you, uh, oh, they had their eyes up. Oh, they was uh, looking uh, uh, for the enemy. Uh, uh, keep your eyes out. Uh, oh, he's everywhere around you. He ain't got a pitchfork uh, and a towel. Uh, I'll tell you, brother, no, he's dressed up. He's got a tie. And brother, I'll tell you something else. Uh, uh, he's a marching out the streets. Uh, uh, mind your cities every day. Uh, uh, but praise God. Uh, uh, what happened? Uh, uh, there was 300 of them. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, took that water. Yeah. Uh, he sent the rest up to the house. Yeah. 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 Sent them to the house. He said, now you got 300. There's too many now, Lord. How can I possibly do this? There's too many. The Lord showed him something. Yeah. Yeah. You think it takes a whole lot? Fear not, little flock. Little flock, it is my Father's good pleasure to give you the king. Fear not, little flock. There's nothing to be afraid of. Don't get your trumpet in one hand. Go get your little uh, pitcher in the other hand and put a candle in it. Yeah. Go up on top of the mountain. The enemy is asleep down in the valley. Yeah. You know what the Lord told him before he even went up on the mountain? He said, this day I have de delivered them into your hand. Yeah. The battle hadn't even been fought. The Lord said they had been delivered yeah. into your hand. Yeah. Uh, brother, they went on top of the mountain uh, uh, with the trumpet. A hundred here, a hundred over here, and a hundred over here. Uh, and at the sound and the knowledge of it, uh, I blow the trumpet. I blow the trumpet that the Lord has given you. I stand up for the Lord. I praise God. I brother, how the enemy woke up in the middle of the night. I stirred to death. How they began to slay one another. The leaders had to come down. Let me tell you what's going to happen. How they going to cut their head off with their own swords? What's going to happen? It's going to happen. Tell it. I know it is. They burst the pitchers open, brother, and woke up, heard that noise, looked yeah. out, saw the light all about the top. Thought they was thousands. Let me tell you something. When the light shines, brother, you know who's in it? Who is yeah. the light? Yeah. The Lord's the light. Yeah. The Lord's the light. Yeah. And there was 300 of them, and there was a multitude of the other ones. You know what happened? They killed their own selves. That's what happened. The Lord's going to deliver the enemy. Yeah. He's already delivered the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Right, he's already conquered death, hell, and the grave. Yeah. You got a problem in your life. It ain't just this culture that you're living in. It ain't just these people out here that love to smoke in the name of God, take His name in vain, laugh and mock people because they believe it. It's not just that. It's not just those things. There's other things that come before you. He's going to deliver us from that stuff. Yeah. 
He's going to take care of it. The Bible says, the writer says, he saw a great multitude coming up out of tribulation, brother. Coming up out of tribulation. You're going to have trials and tribulations in this world, but be of good cheer, the Lord said, for I have overcome the world. There's not a sickness in this world. There's not a disease in this world. There's not an enemy in this world that the Lord cannot defeat. Is in the Lord. Turn it over to God Almighty, and He'll take care of it, no matter what it is. All the days of my life, I want to be found praising the Lord. Let me tell you something. People say, "Well, you act like you you believe in this." Yeah, I believe in it. I believe it with every fiber of my being. Was it not the fourth watch? It's getting dark right now. It's sunny out there, but trust me, it's dark in the land that you live in. This is a nation that has turned its back on God. This is a nation that is being led by people that are of this. They are of the devil. They're of the devil, every one of them. Let me tell you something. There is a God in glory who has power over all of them. When Nebuchadnezzar said, look what I have done. The Lord did something that man put him in his right place. And a little while later, you know what he said? Let your God be my God. It's because that God is the true and living God. Those three brothers got put in the fiery furnace because of what they said. Because what they refused to do. And because, let me tell you, they're going to come. They're going to tell you that you're going to have to let them in your church. You're going to have to do this. Lord, I'll take the building away. I'll go up on the mountain and praise God. I'll go under the truth and praise the Lord. I'll praise Him in my closet right there. Nobody that can separate you from the love of God. We're not going to pray under your God when the music plays. We're going to praise our God. And brother, you praise your God. And you know what's going to happen? Now behold, did we not put three in? I look and behold, I see four. One after in the second God. Let me tell you, he's going to walk with you every step of the way. You may not think he's there, but just like them brethren. I don't know if he will, but I know he's able. Let me tell you, you draw nine to God, you know what he's going to do? He's going to draw nine to you. Pray to God daily. Read his word daily and see what happens. I told you this before, I tried a thing at the house. I told my youngest, I said, for 40, next 40 days, we're going to do something. Yeah. Every night, we're going to get down around the bed. We're going to get on our knees and we're going to pray to God as a family. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to see what happens. Let me tell you, man, it seemed like everything just started clicking. Yeah. Like right there, everything just started going well. Yeah. Started drawing nine to God. He was drawing nine yeah. to us. Let me tell you. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek after him. Yeah. Obedience is your part. Yeah. You be obedient, you'll eat the fat of the land. You'll get more out of it is what happened. Amen. You'll get something out of it that you couldn't get before. Yeah. Fourth watch of the night. When it gets the darkest. See, I said dark with me. I didn't forget what I was talking about. It's a dark. It's yeah. daylight out there. Let me tell you, it's dark in the land you're living in. Yeah. In the fourth watch of the night. Yeah. The Lord had been up on top of the mountain praying all night long. Yeah. The brethren was in the boat heading across to the other side. And in the fourth watch of the night, what happened? It began, the wind started blowing and the sea got all messed up and they was all began to get scared. Yeah. Yeah. That's the same way it is with us. Sometimes we feel like we've lost the battle. It looks like the enemy has control and that took over everything. Yeah. It looks like there's no turning back now. Yeah. They will tell you that it's all is lost. But let me tell you something, brother. The fourth watch of the night, he looked up and saw a man. And this man was walking on the water. Yeah. He was yeah. walking on the water. Yeah. And that's what the Lord will do. He'll come to where you are in the fourth yeah. watch of the night. You don't have to go to him. He'll come to you. Yeah. That's exactly what the Lord's going to do for his people. He's going to do it for his people in time. And praise God, he's going to do it in the morning of the resurrection. Yeah. People say, oh, we're going to have this big revival. Let me tell you what's going to happen. It's going to wax worse and worse and worse. That's what the Apostle Paul said. When you see these things. See, I was telling my wife this. I'm all the time complaining. I said, this, this. Do you see this? Do you hear this? She said, it ain't going to get no better. I said, you're right. It's not. 
A lot of people look at that and you find yourself getting depressed, 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 depressed. Let me tell you something. The Israelites, the Jews, were given a sign of when the Messiah would come. They were given a sign. And you read in the Old Testament, it tells you, you read the uh, 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. They had that same book me and you've got. They, they had it. <clears throat> they had it. They read it. And you know what? When in this year and out the other, the Lord gave them all these signs. Yeah. Don't read this to you. Who hath believed our report? Yeah. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Yeah. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Yeah. And as a root out of a dry ground. Yeah. He hath no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. There's a man who came forth as a root yeah. out of dry ground. Amen. He was professing to be born of a virgin. That's what that says right there. Yeah. When you see one who comes professing to be born of a virgin, know that this is the one. This is yeah. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows. Was that not Jesus? Yeah. That was the Lord. He's acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him and he was despised and we esteemed him not. Yeah. All of these signs came before him. Yeah. They saw the signs. And you know what they said? He's not the Messiah. Some of them knew that he was the Messiah. Yeah. They knew it. And they said, take him and crucify him. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to think about this just for a minute. Just, just think about this for a second. I, I went years, Brother Tim, reading this and thinking about these men that turned the Lord over. I went years for believing that almost that exclusively all of these men did not understand that he was the Messiah. No. And they turned him over. I believed that for a long time. You know what? You read your Bible a little bit careful or more careful and you'll understand that's not the case. There were many of these men who knew yeah. that he was the son of the living God. God. Yeah. And you know what they said? Crucify him. Because in their mind, in their mind, if we can kill the Son of God, we can take his place. If you don't think that you're living in a world today where there's people that don't believe the same thing, you are highly deceived. Highly deceived. There's people that say if we can just get these Christian people to shut up. Yeah. If we can tear down their house and discourage them, they'll go back to their houses and not say or do anything yeah. and have to battle be won. Yeah. And then we can come in and sit yeah. down on our own little man-made throne and we can rule the world. I'm not making this up. This is real. No. This yeah. is what people believe. Yeah. Yeah. They had a sign and they didn't adhere to it. There were some amongst them that dared, dared question the authority. The authority was telling them this man Jesus is a bad man. Yeah. And their eyes and their senses was telling them this. But we saw him heal the lame. Mm -hmm. We saw blind people receive sight. Yeah. We saw people who were dead yeah. raised yeah. back alive. Uh, we saw all of these miracles. We saw him walk on the water, feed a multitude with yeah. a few fish yeah. and loaves of bread. They saw it with their eyes. Yes, they did. And the people at the top said, he's a bad man. Yeah. People at the top are telling you today that he's just a man. That's what they're telling you. They're telling you that. We didn't see it with our eyes. What did he tell yeah. Thomas. Lesser are those who have not seen and yet believe. Those people saw it, but yet they allowed the leaders, the people at the top, to tell them different. Your leaders and my leaders are telling me and you different. Whether you like it or not, they're telling you different. And my allegiance, and I'll say this, and I'm not ashamed to say it either, my allegiance in this world is correspondent with exactly what we write here in these articles of faith. My allegiance in this world, <clears throat> I forget which one it is, I want to read it exactly, but we are solemnly bound, Number 10. solemnly bound to the King of Zion. 
solemnly bound by our allegiance to the king of Zion. Think about that. Who's your allegiance? It's not to the uh, National Educators Association. I can promise you that. It's not to the Republican Party or the Democrat Party. I can promise you that. It ain't to the buzzards or the bats or whatever else they call them. Secret groups that they join, the elks or whatever. I don't, it ain't nothing to that. You're solemnly bound to the God of this Bible. Yeah. 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 Because he done something for yeah. you. And let me yeah. tell you what you did when you went and baptized. When I, when I went in the water and baptized, this is what I said. I, I don't know how you may have said it. Yeah. Lord, if you would deliver me from this, I will do whatever it is you have me to do. I will do it. You know what that is? That's a vow. Yeah. Yeah. It is better... Yeah. To not make a vow. Amen. Then to make one and not keep it. The Lord's delivered you from something. He delivered you from sin, but how many more things has He delivered you from? We would never be able to count. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to stand for us to stand up for him. Take up your cross, follow after the Lord. And he'll bless you. He'll bless you I believe everything he I love the truth. Enjoy it.